I promise I would not be like Vasco to ask you to, uh, to leave the room. But for sure you will not uh, join in, in case that you, you are not needing your 30%, you will not join a lot of from this talk. Okay. Of course, I cannot, I cannot guarantee <laughs> because I'm not the one who is, who is paying you. But uh, what I can say is that you will have uh, a lot more chances to do that. And you will not have to take my word for it. You will see why. <coughs> okay. So we can start for real now. That's me. My name is Vonimir Križ and I, I'm in software development for 20 years officially. Uh, for 13 or 14 years I have been a developer and for the last six years I'm leading development teams in uh, large, large software development projects in uh, Hungary, Croatia, Egypt, building software systems for financial institutes, institutions, banks, evil banks. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm really glad to be here. Thank you very much for having me here. And before I came here, uh, I talked to, to a friend of mine and he told me, yes, that's a good conference. What I have been heard that, that uh, this conference is great for recruiters. They're looking for new people there. And after that, they sent only me to that conference. I don't know what to think about this. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> what do I think now? I think it's a great conference. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have so much chances to be on, uh, on developers conference. And it is different than these agile events. Uh, and no, no one recruiters has asked me anything. So, so everything is okay. If you, if, you meant, if you meant this. What about you? Ah, so I'm right. So I'm right. Maybe we'll get this 30% you were talking about. Okay, let's see it till the end of the, of the talk. <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh, this talk is about uh, non-technical skills which are really important in, in an agile environment. But how it came to my mind? I'm going to tell you a real story about two person. Uh, a real story from my company. Uh, after that, that was a trigger when I realized that these non-technical skills are extremely, extremely important. Why? Okay, uh, uh, let me introduce Marco. Marco is a real name. He's a developer. Uh, two years ago, Marco came to our, to our company uh, as a part of a larger group to job interview. He was just finished his, uh, his studying. And he was, let's say, in technical skills, he was pretty much the same with others who are beginners. And not so much difference about that. But what was really interesting that uh, Marco, Marco was studying for seven years. Okay, seven years is not so usual. Uh, usually people do it in five years. So we have asked him, Marco, what happened? <laughs> what happened? Why did you spend so much time at university? He said, uh, after three years, uh, uh, I ran out of money. So I have to go to Germany to do, a, uh, do you know what is Baustell, a very hardworking Baustell, for two years, just to, just to earn some money to, to pay the rest of his university the rest of two years. So it's seven years in total. Okay, that, uh, that told us a lot that he's a really hard worker, let's say. He was communicated very clearly, was very interested and eager to start. That was all, let's say, skills or, or, or characteristics which are not technically related, right? But Marco got the job for non-technical reasons. Also, there is an, another person, uh, her name is Borna. Well, Borna is not, uh, not a real name, and in Croatia it's a universal name. It can be a woman, it can be a man. 
so it can stay a real anonymous for you. Borna was, uh, was in our company uh, two years ago, maybe, maybe, maybe a year or two years, never mind. Uh, and that person was uh, technically, let's say, more than average, you know, very skilled, but extremely introvert. This person was never communicated to other, never trans translated any knowledge to other, never communicated about any problems. In one sentence, was unable, unable to, to be a part of Agile team. And what happened? Borna lost the job. Okay, it's not so cruel, <laughs> like, like I said, because uh, that person was rented from another company, but we have asked that, that company to replace Borna. Okay. So that is a fact. There are people who lost the job and who got the job not connected to any technical skills. So then it came to my mind, maybe it's really important. Let's, so I decided to investigate it a little bit more. And I'm a person who believes in, in data. So you don't, don't take my word, because I did a survey for this. I asked a lot of people using my social networks and also from some Serbian friends here. And I got uh, 100, uh, more than 150 uh, responses, which is, I would say, OK, to, to change some conclusions. It was a survey about uh, what are the most important non-technical non skills and how much are you willing to pay more to people who has those skills. OK. And what happened? This is the first result, and it's very interesting. More than 50% of employers, employers are willing to pay 30% or more for having those skills. That's data. That's not my imagination. Okay. Also, a developers was a part of this survey, and uh, I already heard some Let's say, why developers? They cannot, uh, they cannot rise my salary. They are my teammates. But it's not a true. Uh, is there any very young developer here? Who is the youngest? 20? OK, would you please stand up? <laughs> Don't be afraid. You are not going to sing anything. <laughs> What's your name, please? Ivan. Ivan. Yeah. Ivan, in, in less than a year, Ivan could be your boss. Really, that's the world where we are living in. OK, easily. It can happen easily that he can be your next boss. So it is very important what Ivan thinks about it. And also, if you are in an agile environment, don't forget that your performance depends heavily, heavily on your teammates. You can see them. <laughs> that was not so bad. <laughs> OK, so developers also matters. Imagine. If you go to two interviews for a job, if, you re if we rely on statistics, you will get 30% more at one of them. That's data. Interested enough? OK, let's proceed. <coughs> That's what we are going to do today. This is a language that we all understand, so I decided to use it. OK. What we are going to do, we are going to explore the three most important skills from this survey. I'm going to give you some hints how you can be better in these skills, how you can develop these skills. And also, as you can see, if, if you develop those skills, that's good for you, of course, but you cannot sell it so easily. So we are going to we are going to discuss and I'm going to give you some hints how you are going to advertise yourself when you come to your next recruiter or, or next boss. Okay. So, three skills. How, I'm ca how can I 
be better in those skills and how can I sell myself after that? Okay, that's, that's our story for today. But not so fast. <coughs> let's say, before we see what is really important, let's take a look what is not so important, surprisingly for me. This is data. You see, knowledge about Scrum, Kanban, XP and such stuff, less than 1% of employees thinks that is important during this recruitment. So, uh, it's, it's not so uh, easy for me because somehow I feel like I'm cutting the branch that I'm sitting on now. <laughs> but that's the price of dealing with data, uh, to be surprised. Also, as you see, motivator, more, uh, less than 4%, and also domain knowledge. Uh, I am not saying that those uh, skills are not important, but I'm just saying that there are another skills that are more important than this. Does this sound familiar? No. Okay. <coughs> The number one, the number one skills is willingness to learn. So 40% or 41% of employers and teammates wants you to learn constantly. Okay, that's pr pretty much disappointed for you crowd now because, oh no, this guy is going to deliver some very boring talk because willingness to learn is not, uh, not something that, that I cannot heard outside of this room. But hold your horses because we have some really, really, really interesting stuff to learn about learning. And you will see it's not so obvious. Uh, on this topic, I would also like right now, I will give you a couple of seconds. Think about you for the previous week, not this week because it's conference now. What have you learned during the previous week? Okay, in your professional life. No? Did you learn something, really? Learned? No? For a whole week, probably most of you did something, but some of you probably not. I'm not going to ask you to raise a hand, it's so boring. But the message is sent. Uh, if you do not learn, be warned. Your job is in danger. That's fact. In a couple of years, you could lose your job. As you can see, 40% of your bosses wants you to learn. Okay, let's proceed. If this is so much important, let's try to understand how we can be better in this. <coughs> Take a look at this slide. To be better in learning, you should adopt some good learning techniques, right? Tools, mental tools. Take a look at this, this list. Summarization, highlighting, keyword mnemonic, rereading, re imaginary use for test learning. These are all the things that we have been taught in our schools that are good to use for learning. But unfortunately, that's not a true. There is a pretty much new paper on this. It's a serious, really serious paper published by Association for Psychological Science, improving students' learning, blah, 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 blah by Professor John Danolsky, which uh, this research shows, showed that these techniques are not good, not good enough. Uh, you will, uh, we will probably share this presentation after this, right? So these are all the references uh, you, can, you can easily get this paper. And this is like 40 pages or something like this to learn if you are interested. But what is, what is good then, according to this, this, this study? Distributed practice. What is this? Uh, I would say iteration, iterations applied to learning. So it came out that learning in small iterations is a really powerful tool. What does that mean? Learning for 
20 minutes, then doing something else, then 20 minutes and doing something else. Not relearning, but doing this in iterations. Practice testing, what's that mean? Try to test everything that you are learning about. It's not so easy and it's not feasible at all for some, for some cases. But if it's feasible, try to test it. If you test it, you will learn it. Okay. Elaborative interrogation. Oh, that's my favorite because I have a daughter. Uh, she's 16 years now. And looking at these books uh, that she is using, uh, Okay, I have to be polite at the moment because it's not a, because these books are bad, really. For example, history. This is a, a a bunch of texts, not connected at all, even not in a timeline, but it's a history. So you cannot connect this small inform these these parts of inform information at all. This is extremely hard to to manage in in a learning process. And elaborative interrogation is that, asking why and try to connect all of this knowledge that you have. If you connect all of this knowledge, that will be much easier to learn. Okay. Ask yourself why. If you learn something, that something is black. Why is black? Okay. Okay. Interesting. And shocking. Okay, this one is, let's say, my own. At least I'm not, I'm not aware that somebody else is using it. That's a kind of retrospective of learning. What have I learned today? Ask yourself at the end of the day. What have I learned today? By asking yourself what have you learned, you are forcing yourself to remember and to use it in the future. Very, very very easy to adopt. Uh, there are some, as you can see, some places you have to be all alone for this. And the third one is my favorite because I know you are looking at a married man. There is no other place when you can be alone for this. <coughs> okay. So I'm tweeting about it. And, uh, so no, it's not about knowledge sharing, it's about me. It's about my learning, okay. And now, as I, as I promised, if you are a constant learner, let's say you adopted some techniques, you are very good at this, how you are going to <coughs> tell it to, at the job interview? How going, you are going to do this? Uh, I'm a constant learner, I mean really, I am. Hmm? That's not a, not, not a good way, probably. Would you employ somebody with, with this, that sentence? No. Probably no. What is the better way? Better way. Last month, I invested. That's proof. I spent my money. I invested in, in, in a training, in an elastic search training. Elastic search is a concrete technology. Speaking in concrete terms, concrete technology means I'm not lying psychologically because I'm talking to you something very concrete that you can check. Okay. So it means here is a proof and I'm not lying. That's much more interesting in CV and especially in interview. Okay. I'm the guy, believe me, I'm the guy which is very often from the other side of that table. And such sentence uh, is really important. The second one, problem solving. Oh, again, this guy is really, no shit Sherlock. Well, everybody would, be, would like to be a problem solver. But how we can do this? Hmm? How we can do this? Tell me. Tell me. Uh, what is a pre-request to solve a problem? Any problem. To know the problem, exactly. Hmm? And this is not stupid. 
and obvious. Because you should be aware when somebody is talking to you about some problem in, in majority of, of, of cases, this is not about a problem but a consequence. The root cause is very rarely communicated. So you have to find the root cause to resolve a problem. You cannot be a problem solver if you are unable to find the root cause. Well, luckily, Japanese th thought about this 40 years ago, I don't know. And in Lean, there are plenty of techniques they, that can help you to find the root cause of the problem. Probably you are, some of you are aware of these techniques. And all of these techniques and mental tools that I'm mentioning, it's not an idea that I can teach you now. It's just a reference, so you can use it later on. But five whys. Five whys is a really nice technique to find the root of the problem. If you have been on Vasco, Vasco talk yesterday, he mentioned that, uh, that case when somebody say, you, developer team, you are very slow. You're very slow. What do you think? Is, what is the reason to be very slow? Is that slow coding? Probably not. But applying five eyes could, could, could be like that. For example, you gather a team and say, okay, we are really delivering slow. Okay, that's first uh, step. And why is that so? Then some developers maybe say, uh, we have a lot of bugs. So I spent a lot of time fixing the bugs, sound, sound familiar? Fixing the bugs and not having so much time to develop new features. That's first why. Okay, why do we have so much bugs? We don't have automated tests. Why don't we have automated tests? Nobody told us so, or that's not a good answer, okay. Uh, we didn't have time to write automated tests, or I don't know, maybe we don't have people who know how to write automated tests, or we don't have licenses, whatever. And digging, digging, and digging can brought you to a root cause. Then resolving a root cause could make you a problem solver, okay? You would be a real problem solver in that case. There are a bunch of root cause, cause analysis uh, methods, and they are really interesting. Look for this in some lean uh, books or something like that. This fishbone diagram is, is really uh, pretty much the same, or, or it's, a, it's a variance of, of the same technique so I'm not going to, <coughs> to elaborate it more, okay? So we are on a second skill, problem solving, and we show how you can find the root cause to be a problem solver, okay? And if you are a problem solver, how you are going to communicate it during a job interview or sending a CV? That's an interesting question. Again, uh, let's do it by example. Okay. Here's the story, again. I'm feeling like grandpa, <laughs> telling the stories all the time. Okay, you should prove that you are a problem solver. Here is a real story about a company called Rimac Automobili. Have everybody heard about it? Yeah. Maybe some of you. Okay. Uh, Rimac Automobili is, uh, uh, it's not an advertising because they don't need it uh, from, from you uh, if you don't have a couple of millions of euros. But it's not an advertising, but it's, it's really interesting to, uh, to know something about this company, just to know how different the culture of the newcomers, the new company is. This is a Croatian company, 30 kilometers from Zagreb. They are designing and producing the fastest, uh, the fastest accelerating electric car in the world. This car is called Concept One, and it runs from zero to 
102.8 seconds. It costs a lot. It's a million euros per car. Okay, they're also producing, producing uh, the most advanced uh, electric bicycle, bicycle in the world. And takes you, thank you for a question. It's also very expensive. It's 7,000 euros per bike. Okay, so this is a profile of a company. They have only 50 employees. 50 or 15? 50, 50. Close to 50. May, maybe it's not the exact okay, number, okay. but it's not hundreds of thousands, okay. Uh, a friend of my friend was uh, really pissed off with uh, all this situation when he sent this uh, CVs all around that got refused. So in, in case of uh, Rimac Automobili, when Rimac Automobili decided to uh, publicly announce that they are looking for, a, for a people to improve their sales, to do it very different. Instead of writing a CV and sending a CV, what he did, he did a real research of United States market for wheelchair batteries. Because Rimac Automobili has a big business with batteries because they have all these all this patents and such stuff on batteries. He did this research and instead of sending a CV, he sent this research. And what happened? The very next day, uh, Mr. Mr. Mata Rimac, which is a founder of a company, gave him a call and asked if he can start today. Why? Because that was a proof that, was a proof that he is a problem solver. He is a problem solver, not declaring myself as a problem solver but putting a proof on it. That's it. You should do that. Okay? Communication skills. Ah, that's pretty obvious. That communication skills in, in agile environment is, is, really, is really important. But before that, let's, let me put some warning to you. How much do I, do I have? <laughs> I'm a bit lost. Eight How much? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. That's okay. Uh, uh, recently, I work a lot with Egyptian colleagues, and uh, I travel to Cairo and such stuff. And let me tell you that sometimes, for some cultures, you will need totally different communication models and skills. For example, if I ask Ahmad, what do you think, can we have this testing environment up and running until the end of the day? Yes, Mr. Krish, of course, I'm going to do that till the end of the day. Great. End of the day, there's Ahmad, he already left. He left home, okay, no problem, I will ask him tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, where is Ahmad? He didn't show up. But did Ahmad uh, tell, told you that I asked him to set up this test environment? No. Okay, no problem, but can we have this test environment until the end of the day? Yes, Mr. Krish, of course, we can do it. Now you have some suspect how this, how this story is developing. It, uh, just to make it clear, I'm not talking about good and bad. I'm talking about different. Huh? For some reasons, they are unable, unable to say no or not possible. For some reasons, they, they don't want to do this. And I got, did I, did I resolve this problem? Anna asked me, no. But at least I know that it's happening. That's a good start. Okay, <laughs> but you have to be aware of this stuff. What is this? said that. Okay. That's worse than my t-shirt. <laughs> give it to someone else. I'm a speaker. <laughs> You're a speaker. Okay. Give it to someone else. Uh, Why well, I'm showing this to you. Just to show that 14 years ago, communication skills was recognized as essential for agile development. So it's nothing new. Essential, really. 
not having a communication skills in agile environment, as you, as you saw from the, from the first example, it's not an option. You can lose your job. But what is good, you can learn it. You can learn it. Okay. At job interview, I have a good communication skills, I think. You see, everybody likes me. Huh? That's not the way. <coughs> but something like this. For better communication, I use four years model. Do you know what is four years model? That's a model that, show, uh, that, that you should be aware of that your message that you are sending, it's not only about matter, but also about self-revealing, relationship, and appeal. So, it's, so the receiver has four ears, and the problem is that his four ears and your four, four tongues are not matched sometimes. So, so this is about knowing a model. It's not a, it's not a method. And I message. Does, does anybody know what is the I message? I message. Beginning a sentence with I is much better. For example, I feel that we have a problem with that slow build machines. That's, that's okay to say it like that. This is opposite to you, met, you, you model. You messed up because you set up this very slow machine. Or you can combine it. I feel that you messed up. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's not an option also. Uh, it's not about uh, these two tools, but again, it's about concrete methods and tools that send a message during a conversation that you are not lying. Right? Not lying. By the way, don't, do not lie. It's not about lying. <laughs> okay, so we passed through, we are pretty close to, no? <laughs> so, somebody turned it off <laughs> just to, to speed me up. Okay. <clears throat> We are at the end. Uh, I would like you to give it a try because uh, it's about myself also. When you come to the conference, you see and uh, hear everything. Uh, everything is very nice. You learn a lot, then apply nothing. Give it a chance. It's really, you, it, the data speaks for this. You can achieve much more if you have those skills, right? It's not about me telling something. It's about you and your salary. <laughs> okay, that was, that was all. Thank you very much for having me here. It was my pleasure. And if you have some questions, I would be really happy if I can find an answer.